Right, okay. This this paper's really about the result of two obsessions, one of mine and one of Anton's, really, um, that I realized a few years ago that I hadn't got a clue how forth worked from the compiler point, compiling point of view and the standard. I really didn't understand the standard anymore. And I went through, so I went on a little little in set of investigations to find out what the standard actually meant. And the key phrase in the standard, it turns out, is this magic phrase, non-default compilation semantics. And what it really means is that the word doesn't do what you expect it to do when you compile it. If you, if you compile dupe, you know that you just lay down some code that will that will eventually perform the operation of dupe. If you laid, if you meet if, you know, it doesn't do it doesn't do a conditional branch. It lays down some code that at some mysterious time in the future will lay down the in, will perform a conditional branch. And there are no mechanics within the fourth word set to allow you to separate these actions. And really what we did then in VFX was to change it in version 5 so that you this, this separation of interpretation and compilation could be done cleanly and absolutely. And that actually had a minor benefit in that it improved standards compliance in one or two places um, unfortunately the you know nobody actually notices it except Anton the so this first slide is showing you really that we we can separate it and the notation isn't that awful so what we're doing here at, if you take take this word do down the bottom is it has interpret behavior and it has compile behavior. And because the compile behavior is not is non-default, we have this word NDCS colon, which simply says what follows is the non-default compilation semantics for the word above. So we call these such words dual words. There was a certain amount, amount of, of complaint that people had to say non-default compilation semantics all the time. They didn't like saying NDCS, so eventually we came to dual. So dual seems to be socially acceptable. Um, to a certain extent, I don't like it because, because when we come down to the, the, the word, the dot quotes at the bottom here, Dual is not expressing what it really, dual colon doesn't express what you really meant, whereas NDCS did. On the other hand, the number of, in order to support this me mechanism, we don't actually need a lot of words. Um, we need to be able to mark a word as being, as, as being NDCS or dual, and we need to be able to start its compilation action, which is where you, what you've already seen. And of course, when you write your text interpreter, you need to be able to determine whether a word has a, has non-default compilation semantics. So we've got this query word, and this is very much the same as the majority of fourth kernels, which. Uh, can test to see whether a word is immediate without you having to know carnally how immediate is implemented. So dual words have now been used on VFX 4 5.0 onwards for the last 18 months or two years or so. Um, they that we have had no problems seen or reported in VFX 4.32. Uh, in VFX 4.64, 
it's too early to tell but it's looking good and any problems we did have were stemmed from other problems that are now fixed so essentially the change was unnoticed so unless you're being in guru mode and then those one or two people who actually went into guru mode they after explanation the solution was accepted so we've actually had no contradictory comment about this change of notation or the inter the text interpreter and while we're on with text interpreters we then found ourselves being pushed or being behind the, the fashionable times in dealing with recognizers it's it's a serious mistake to underestimate the impact of fashion on the software industry the software industry as a whole behaves far more like the fashion industry than anything any technical business at all it is it, it you should also understand that the lifetime of applications is considerably longer than the lifetime of fashionable languages we deal with more than one application which has been out there for over 30 years whereas in those last 30 years think of how many language programming languages have been the next big thing and have died on the vine so point of, of recognizers was to this investigation was really do I really was to find out do I actually think they're a good thing and if they're a good thing um, are they a humane solution for a fourth system used by ordinary human beings now the objective of recognizers is simply to allow the text interpreter to be fully extensible the one I was looking at was originally Matthias Truter's original recognizer, which is actually a beautiful piece of code. If, if you want to know how recognizers work or what they do, it's actually your best bet is actually to go back and read Matthias's code and his very original proposal, because then you will see thing, things that have that essential fourth element of correctness you can tell by looking at the code that it's right and recognizers consist of a sequence of things to do a recognizer what we <coughs> what what is now in the late in later standards is called a recognizer sequence is a list of parsers you need to in when you deal with a fourth when you pass a piece of text into a fourth interpreter you have to find out whether it's a word an integer a double a float and so on or if it's part of a loop package or what the recognizer does is to organize this into a list of an ordered list of parsers that tell it tell the interpreter what this piece of text is and you can see down the bottom here there's a simple definition of interpret where fourth recognizer is the recognizer sequence we're actually going to use recognizes the word that rushes down the lists and returns a type information and each type information and this is one of the clever little bits is is basically a structure of three XTs which handle interpret, compile, and postpone actions. There's this abs that sits after the state protects against people who set state to minus one. Um, but so effectively, this comes out as naught, one, or two cells. You pick up the XT to go, and off you go. And that does your interpretation and compilation. So now we come back and say, what the heck happens when this word is immediate?
because how does this how does my structure know whether it should be executing or compiling this word at compile time well the answer is quite simple you simply handle hand it a different type you you have a type for immediate words and a type for normal words and you might even have a type for ndcs words so there's a basic simplicity in all this but the complexity, as often happens, has been transferred into how you manage these recognizers. But the postpone action is essentially the same, but it's always it's all it's it's the third element in the structure, so it's in two cells and off we go. We execute it. And now postpone has been has reduced. It used to be a ghastly word. And now, as long as each type knows how to deal with itself, all is good. Now, what pushed us to make us do this? You don't go and rewrite the text interpreter in, in a package like VFX forth for no good reason. One of our major clients has an application of now 1.4 million lines of fourth source code. And if we break anything in it, there is serious traffic by email, phone, and all available. And if they're close by, you know, I owe them lots and lots of bottles of wine. So this is, this is breaking this code is not a good idea. So the, re the use case for it is to recognize that as you build bigger and bigger applications, and that applies to fourth too, that you have to start being able to use libraries. And if you have to use somebody's library, then, for example, you are going to have to be able to cope with their OOP code. And if you have to cope with their OOP code, You've got two choices. You can either use their OOP code as it is, or you can rewrite it. Now, I'm no fan of reinventing wheels. The point of converting one from one OOP package to another thrills me not at all. So this means that an OOP package has to be able to be inserted and removed from the underlying fourth system. So that means, in turn, that we need to be able to manipulate the existing recognizer, whether you call it list, sequence, or table, and we need to be able to manipulate existing search order because we have to make the words of one OOP package invisible when the new one goes in. Now, we used to deal with search order management tools. So we can model a recognizer sequence. Damn, it, did that suddenly change size? Scroll back out. You scrolled in. You have to scroll back out. You have to scroll wheel. Okay. Has the left hand side of the of the screen disappeared? No, you yeah. zoomed into the slide. You need to zoom back out again. Oh did I? How did I do that? Okay. Probably, Probably with the mouse wheel. <laughs> okay. So we already we're used to, to dealing with search order. And so we have tools like in VFX and certainly in Swift Forth, we use minus order to remove a word list from search order and plus order to put one in. We can do the same for recognizers by using using plus and minus recognizer. So 
we need so th there are two cases uh, i mean for this one is for dealing with with oop and the others for dealing with floats it's an unfortunate aspect of the floating point on x64 is that you have to be able to cope with both the old x87 numeric data processor but you also have to be able to cope with SSE, the newest, supposedly faster <coughs> float packs. But it appears that for scalar operation, um, SSE is not much faster. So we need but to combine recognizer management words and we need search order manage words, management words. How do I zoom this wretched thing? With your mouse wheel. Well, okay, mouse wheel. Thank you. So in our recognizer use case, we have two OOP packages that, that, that we support regularly and three or four others that have to get, that have to be used, that are used by other people. So this is not a recognizers, a use of recognizers and search order on a wouldn't it be nice if basis. These are problems that we face. We have Chow, which is an old C++ style package that has been in VFX for pretty much since the outset and it has its fans still class vfx is the one that worries us more because it's used by ccs in the in this humongous app and that effectively the the app depend it's mission critical and mo both of these big oop packages require something over a thousand lines of fourth source code so they're not things to be touched lightly and being old they're probably not as well documented as we might do it now so so this was the conversion process firstly i've called it brutality in action because both packages are complex, they contain ugly code, and it was too expensive and too dangerous. Essentially, the technical risks were too high to do a good rewrite. So effectively, it, when you look at these packages, they come into, in, they're split into two parts. One is <coughs> determining whether, the, whether they should be applied or and the second part is what to do with it when they can be applied. And that fits very well into the way that parsers work, the recognizers parsers work, except that in our implementation, in our brutal implementation, the, par the generation of interpretation and compilation is done within the parser and the day and the three element data structures simply just contain no ops <coughs> it's brutal but it works and in surprisingly chow actually ended up needing two parsers um, one at one at the start and one at the end So really, that's 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 it. Recognizers really do have merit, and Gerald was Gerald and Anton have been going on at me for years about this. So, but they've won eventually um, because I am now convinced that the only sane way to be able to use OOP packages within libraries is to do it through recognizers and search order control. So Gerald convinced me that recognizers have merit. Anton has convinced me, as always, that all standards have bugs. Um, Willem Berta, who works for CCS, 
uh, taught me most of what I know about really big fourth systems. And my wife, Pat, has tolerated my apparent refusal to retire. Uh, any questions? Anyone like to ask questions? Is, is that Nick's finger up there? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for the explanation there. And uh, I actually love the first part there because I've used uh, what you call NDCS mm -hmm. in numerous places on the latest version of our program. Uh, do I actually have to do a global conversion now? Is the word NDCS colon out of fashion and dual colon in fashion? No, no, no. They'll coex. If, if I decide, if and when I decide, they will coexist for a year or so. You'll have a chance. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you very much. But I must say uh, that in moving to that way of doing it, um, everything becomes a great deal clearer. It's a really, really good way of doing it. Oh, thank you, Nick. I do appreciate that. I, I actually, it was funny when I did actually come to the point of realizing what this magic phrase "nd non-default compilation semantics" actually means. My, it it made everything a lot a lot cleaner, and it certainly made the, some of the designs cleaner. Any more for any more? Uh, looks like Klaus would like to say something. Klaus. Or do you um, just no, have your microphone no. open? You just have your microphone open. Okay. Anyone else? I don't see any hands. I don't see anything on Mattermost. Is there anything on Twitch? Apparently no, not so far. Not. Okay, thank you all. In which case, thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Which means we're actually heading to this bio break a little early.